one in a pre-shot, a good pre-shot routine always has a trigger to begin it. So I, I, I learned the value of this once. So I was watching a major, and Davis Love the Third. Well, they they were focusing on him. The camera was on him, and he pulls his club out of the bag, and then like a something happened, like a fan got unruly, and and something interrupted flow of the tournament, and. So what does he do? He takes his club and he goes and puts it back in the bag and he pulls it back out. That's the value. What does this do? If you do something like this every single time, for me, I just have begin. I just say to myself out loud or to myself, begin. Now, he actually made the club out of the bag, which is a good one, right? That's a good one. But if you pull the club out of the bag and don't go do your pre-shot routine, then you're going to dilute the value here. So he goes and puts it back in to start all over. And what does that do? It signals your intention. We're going through a routine here. And at the end of the routine, I want you, buddy, to give me the 300-yard drive or the 100-yard stick straight uh, pitching wedge, whatever, right? So I always have a trigger and I honor that. And it be, it's a habit. It becomes habit. You do it every single time. After a while, you don't have to think about it. And then this goes, oh, I know what we're doing. We're doing that pre-shot routine thingy. We're at the end of it. I hit the shot for him. That's how you connect when you're out there on the golf course. All right? Number two, the second thing I do in the pre-shot routine is, and we all probably do this anyway, but it's consciously assess the situation. What's going on? What's the wind? How, you know, how far do I need to hit it? Um, you know, is this a, am I going to choke down on the club because I'm in between? Whatever, things like that. All right? Um, where, you know, what part of the fairway do I want to avoid the trees over there and, and miss left if I'm going to miss? Things like that. Number three, and this is very, very important. Most amateurs miss this. And that is to pick a small target. It's not good enough to just think fairway, middle of the fairway. Now, it's pretty easy when you got a, a flag, 60, 70, 80 yards, because we're aiming for the flag. But what we usually miss out on is when we have our long, iron, our long irons or, or woods, and there's no real defined target. I encourage you to pick a spot out there, even if it's in line with where you want to go. Like I would pick that trash can out there or a house way down there that's above where I'm aiming because your, your unconscious mind loves specific targets. It acts just like a laser guided, uh, a, la well, a laser guided missile system. You can fire off a missile. If you don't put in coordinates, that thing will just go anywhere. And if you're not putting in coordinates of exactly, specifically what you want as part of your communication, well, this doesn't go anywhere. Here's how it can be even worse. Who's ever said or thought, don't hit it into the lake? Don't hit it into the sand trap. What are you doing? You are telling your unconscious mind to hit it into the sand trap or the lake. Here's why. Now, sometimes you're not going to make that connection, and it won't happen. But if you make that connection, and you have the ability to hit it that far into the lake, and you say, don't hit it into the lake, your inner mind doesn't cross don'ts and nots. doesn't understand don'ts and nots. Here's proof. Everybody right now, do not think of Mickey Mouse. How do you not think of Mickey Mouse without thinking of Mickey Mouse? So your inner mind says, okay, here's lake, here you go. Literally, it will guide your club to make sure you hit it into the lake. That's how powerful this thing is. 